Hi, welcome to another video. This one is on speed and velocity. Let's get started. Okay, so we're starting with average speed. Uh, this describes how fast a particle is moving, and the equation is uh, the distance divided by the time interval. We symbolize it with a lowercase v and a subscript of average, or sometimes we we put a bar over the a v, and that's a mathematical symbol for average. So sometimes we do that, and then we wouldn't write average in that case. Okay, so that's just some notation if you happen to see it. Now, the average stands for average speed, x stands for distance in this case, and delta t is the elapsed time, and the SI unit for this is meters per second. Average speed is always a positive number. It's the amount of the velocity. Uh, if we're talking about an instantaneous velocity, a velocity at a very, very, very small time interval. Now, I guess we should probably learn what velocity is, since I've already mentioned it. Average velocity. Average velocity uh, describes what the displacement is doing, how fast the displacement is changing. And the equation is V average with an arrow over the V, and that stands for uh, V being a vector quantity. It identifies this as velocity because velocity has both an amount, a magnitude, and a direction. And the formula is delta X, which stands for change in position or displacement divided by the time interval, the change in time. And again, the SI unit for velocity is the meter per second. Average velocity is going to have a sign associated with it. It's either positive or negative. It tells us what direction the motion is. Okay, here's a recap. Average speed and average velocity. Average speed is equal to distance divided by elapsed time. And average velocity describes how fast displacement is changing with respect to time. Average speed is always positive. And average velocity uh, has a sign, and the sign tells us what direction the uh, change in position is occurring. Okay, we're doing, going to do a couple of qualitative examples here. Uh, first up is we're going to demonstrate the motion of a particle that has an average speed and an average velocity that are both zero. So what does that tell us? If you have no distance in a period of time, or if you have no displacement in a period of time, what does that mean? I guess that would mean that we're standing still, or how we describe it in the uh, physics language is at rest. We're not moving. Okay, let's see the next one. Demonstrate the motion of a particle that has an average speed and an average velocity that are both non-zero. So that means that the object is moving and it has a, a non-zero displacement. So if we start there and then we go to the right and then return back to our starting point, would that give us an average speed that's non-zero? Absolutely. But would give us an average velocity that is non-zero? Well, no, it wouldn't because we have no displacement. So let's take a look at what it uh, could look like. Well, as long as we start and keep moving in the same direction, we will have an average speed that's non-zero, and we will also have an average displacement that is non-zero, which, or I'm sorry, a displacement that's not zero, which means that we'll have an average velocity that's not zero as long as we don't 
uh, end up in our starting position, we will have an average velocity that's not zero. Demonstrate the motion of a particle that has an average speed that is non-zero and an average velocity that's non-zero. Okay, so I'm going to uh, start over here with my drawing. We have a uh, particle. I'm going to put them right here. And it has an average speed that's non-zero and an average velocity that is zero. Well, speed is distance. As long as we have a non-zero distance, it would be a non-zero speed. Our average velocity is zero because our displacement, our change in position is zero. So that would mean that our velocity is zero. We return to our starting place. Now let's take a look at the next example. Demonstrate the motion of a particle that has an average velocity that is non-zero and an average speed that is zero. So what this means is that we travel zero distance but we have a displacement. That's not possible. So four is not a possible situation. So we could never do that. Okay, let's move on. Let's see what's next. Okay, now we're going to do a quantitative, meaning we're going to do with numbers. Uh, we're a particle. We're located at the origin. And we're going to demonstrate how you can move from a position of zero to a position of 10 and back with an average speed of 0.5 meters per second. So I guess I'm going to make the assumption that my positions are given in meters. Okay, so we have a position right here or an origin, our beginning point right there. It's zero meters. And we're going to go from x equals zero from right here. And we're going to travel out to 10 meters and back. Our distance in this case is we've traveled out 10 meters and then returned 10 meters. So our distance is 20 meters. X equals 20 meters. That means distance is equal to 20. And we have an average speed, I'm going to use the shorthand symbol, an average speed of 0.5 meters per second. And now I'm going to uh, figure out how much time I needed to take so that I uh, would travel 20 meters in, uh, with a speed of 0.5 meters per second. So let's go ahead and go back to the formula. So V speed, average speed is equal to distance over the time interval. I want to know how long it takes. So I'm going to solve for delta T. Delta T, the time interval, is equal to the distance traveled over the average velocity. And I'm going to substitute in and that is 20 meters at a average velocity of 0.5 meters per second. And that gives us a elapsed time of 40 seconds. Our total trip will take 40 seconds. We could be going really slow on the way out, say take 30 of those 40 seconds, and then we would have to come back to our starting place really, really fast. Uh, we could only take 10 seconds for that final leg. Now, what's the particle's average velocity for this demonstration? Well, average velocity Put the arrow on it to show that it's a vector. And that's equal to change in position over time interval. Okay, so our change in position, our final position minus our initial position divided by the time interval 
is final position was 0 meters. Initial position was 0 meters over the time interval which we calculated was 40 seconds. And that gives us a average velocity of 0 meters per second. Multiple choice question for you. So go ahead and pause this or rewind so that you can figure this out and remember to answer this on your Google form. Welcome back. Uh, I have a sample problem here for you. Uh, I want to show you how average velocity differs from the average of the velocities. We're given a problem here where it says that we drive in a straight line for one kilometer at 10 meters per second and then we continue on in a straight line at 20 meters per second for another kilometer. What is our average velocity? Well, it's easy to see that the average of our velocities, the average of 10 and 20, is 15 meters per second. But I'm going to show you that that isn't what we get for our average velocity. Our average velocity in this problem is not 15 meters per second. It's something else. So I'm going to say that we start over here, that this is 0 meters, and we travel to that point which is at one kilometer and I'm gonna go ahead and convert that right into meters to start with here one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters that's because of all of our formulas are set up for us to use standard units after we reach that 1000 meter mark we change our speed or I'm sorry we change our velocity to 20 meters per second and we travel to the final point which is two kilometers or another kilometer away and that's equal to 2,000 meters. For this interval we're going to be traveling at 10 meters per second and for the second interval we're going to be traveling at 20 meters per second. I'm going to write over here what uh, average velocity, the formula for average velocity. is equal to change in position over the time interval. Well, for each segment, we have a change in position, and we have an average velocity for the segment. Now we have to calculate the time interval. Okay, so for the first segment, delta time, the time interval, is equal to the change in position divided by the average velocity. So the time interval for the first segment is equal to the change in position 1000 meters minus 0 meters final minus initial 1000 meters over the average velocity which is 10 meters per second or the velocity for the first segment. gives us an elapsed time of 100 seconds. It took us 100 seconds to travel that first kilometer. The second kilometer is equal to uh, the change in position which is 1000 meters. That second segment is 1,000 meters uh, long over the uh, velocity during the second segment which was 20 meters per second and that gives us an elapsed time. It takes us 50 seconds to travel that last kilometer. 
So our total time, our total time, I'm going to just notate it as t total, is equal to 100 seconds plus 50 seconds. 150 seconds. And our total displacement, I'm going to notate that as total, is equal to 2,000 meters. Now, our average velocity then would be equal to the displacement, which is two thousand meters over the time interval, which was one hundred and fifty seconds. And that gives us an average velocity of thirteen point three repeating meters per second. Now it's clear that the average velocity is different than the average of the velocities. It's actually less than the average of the velocities and that's because we spend a lot more time going slow. Think about that. We spend a lot more time going slow than we do going fast. Now I think you have a free response problem. And take your time, work this out, rewind and look at the example. Uh, that'll help you uh, figure out this problem. Remember to answer in the Google form. See you next time.